Bishop takes f5. Sorry, let me just... Oh, no! A mouse slip, man! That looks like an inaccuracy, though. Don't get me wrong, our position's very nice. Following the previous episode of the chess.com rapid rating climb, I've decided we're going to switch to 15 minutes with 10 second increment. And if you're wondering why, check out the previous video. It'll be linked in the card and you can check out the playlist while you're there of all the other previous episodes. But, of course, you don't have to. You can just watch this and ignore all the other episodes because I'm sure this will be a banger. We're starting with the black pieces against d4. So, I can play King's Indian, which is my tried and trusted, although not so trusted anymore, which is why I've started playing the Slav. We could go Knight f6 and switch to a Nimzo. We could go for like a Knight f6, e6, and b6. Um, let's start with Knight f6. We can basically transpose to anything from Knight f6, and we're just going to see what he does. So we can go for a King's Indian. We can go, okay. So he's going to go for a London. And what I actually quite like against the London is playing c6 and like a Slav. And it's like kind of mirroring my opponent because the plan is probably to put a bishop on f5, go e6, bring the knight to d7, c6, maybe queen b6, and then decide where our dark squared bishop's going to go. But I think I quite like this plan. Um, I had a really good classical game in a very similar line, which worked out very nicely. Let's start with c6. Of course, we could play bishop f5 first. But I like c6 just because it gives the queen the opportunity to come to b6, target the b2 pawn, potentially defend our b7 pawn once our bishop leaves the defense of it. So I think bishop to f5 makes sense. It's fixed. I don't know why the board was like that. My opponent goes c4, which is of course logical. We can go e6. So that if takes, we can take back with the e-pawn. Which I'm a fan of. I'm definitely a fan of that. And, okay. Knight c3. Some of you might be wondering about bishop d6 challenging his bishop. But then he is a knight to e5. Which is kind of annoying. So... We do have, actually, knight to h5 going after the bishop. I'm sure that's the best way to play the position, objectively. But we're also sacrificing a fair bit of development to do that. Queen b6 looks tempting, but queen d2. I won't see what we gain. Bishop e7 what I'm going to play. I think I'd just like to get castled first before I do anything over the top on the queen side. Just get my king nice and safe. Once my king's safe, I can always recapture here with the c pawn. Right now, if he would take, I'd probably take with the e pawn just to keep this diagonal blocked up by the c6 pawn. I'm not saying I'm going to get mated or anything, but there could be ideas of knight b5 as well, coming in to the weak dark squares that his bishop controls. So that's worth bearing in mind. So the position's not bad. Our bishop is still putting a lot of pressure. If our opponent goes bishop d4, I think we have knight to e5. I think that's supposed to be the idea. And for the same reason, I don't really want to put my bishop on d6 because, like I said, knight e5, it, it just blocks my bishop up. And I think I've explained this in a previous video, but the bishop on e7, it looks passive, sure. 
but it also doesn't need to be doing anything insane like it's a perfectly good piece just monitoring these diagonals and freeing up room for the other pieces to move around of course we can always bring it to b4 later in the game or maybe it transfers to f6 or maybe this knight moves to e5 and the bishop helps support a g5 push which is actually an idea that I learned from a previous classical game in which we had a similar position, except my opponent went c3 rather than c4. And in the post-game analysis, the computer was screaming for g5. So, so, okay, c5. I know that's an idea. I'm going to castle. Maybe, maybe a5? No, a5 then... Knight a4, knight b6. So he's going to try and clamp me down on the queen side. But I think this allows us to go knight to h5. And the problem is our dark square is quite weak. Because we've got a light squared complex. But I think we trap his bishop. Like, I mean we don't win it. But we get to take it with the knight. And trade off a very strong piece. And I actually got into a bit of trouble in a similar sort of structure in the previous game of this rapid rating climb. But I think here we're good. Now you could argue that taking looks a little scary because the rook gets opened up. We also don't have to take yet. We can continue developing and take later. So I'm going to go knight d7. This supports a potential b6 push or e5. If I can get e5 in, I'll be very happy. Something like knight takes, pawn takes, bishop f6, maybe rook e8. Ooh. That doesn't look right. Can I not take, and then take, and then damage your pawn structure? This queen, queen h5 isn't a threat because my bishop monitors everything. So let's take. And then b6, a5, this looks amazing, this looks amazing. I like b6 because if he takes it, I have bishop takes b4. How does he defend it? Here, I think knight a4 is the only move, and then a5. But then takes, takes, uh, but then we win. Yeah, okay, b6. I think that works. Again, I'm not worried about the king side. You might be worried about bishop d3. And if we ex if bishop d3 takes, takes, there's some ideas on h7. We do have g6, of course. We could also drop the bishop back to g6. We could also ignore him and take after bishop takes, pawn takes, we can glue things shut with g6. That might be the best way of going about it, actually. And we do open the e-file for the rook. So b takes c5. Bishop takes f5. Sorry, let me just... Oh, no! A mouse slip, man! Oh my god. Oh my days. I did not mean to do that. I was trying to draw arrows. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's think. Game isn't over. We have to take this. Otherwise, he's going to take on h7. Dude. Why? Why? Why chess.com? Why? What did I do? You screwed me over in the last game as well. Yeah, now quit. Mm -hmm. Can we have to go h6? That looks like an inaccuracy though. Actually. Because if he takes on f5, we take the knight. Where's the knight going? If the knight goes to a4... 
I think we can take. Threaten queen d2. And if he takes, then his pawn structure is ruined. I think queen h4, h5 was a massive inaccuracy. A blunder, probably. I don't know why he didn't just take. Now, if you take with the queen, I can probably take here. That's a good move, though. That's a good move. So I can't take the knight now. But what if I take here? And if he takes back, I'm also opening up the possibility of queen to a5. Here. And then bishop takes b4. Looks very nice. Could take on b4. Then the knight goes to e2. The attack seems to fizzle out. Don't get me wrong, our position's very nice. Queen h5 was not good. Now, if c takes d4, again, we still can't take because of the pin, so we could go a3, protecting b4. But then queen c7, attacking e5 and opening this up as a threat. So if rook takes, queen takes, and we win the rook. Let's do it. Let's do it. I think this works. Again, there's nothing to worry about on the king side. Our opponent has nothing, no attack. His queen and rook are just standing around, really. Knight e2. This is crushing. Just bishop takes b4. Now we do have to be a little careful because knight to f5 might be scary. But I think we can go d3 and d2. And keep our bishop's retreat open. Because c5 could glue the pawn in. But then our bishop is kind of out of the game. Which I'm not a fan of. So, d3. The knight doesn't have to move, of course. Well, no, actually, that comes with check. So, I think that's good. Knight to f4 threatens the pawn. Then we have d2. And then the bishop glues the pawn in place. Our queen can come to the defense of the king side. He's not threatening anything. Let's play it. And we are up two pawns. I don't know how that's happened. <laughs> I don't know how we've managed to swindle our way out of this. It's insane. By the way, if you're still watching at this point in the video, thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying the game. If you are, drop a like and subscribe because I'm dropping chess videos every single day similar to this. So, you know, you can be notified as they come out. And the channel's growing really quickly. So thank you very much. I'm really enjoying making content. This is a nice looking move. Now, if I take, you, if takes, oh my god, arrows, please, don't do this to me again. <laughs> Knight takes, it forks us, right? But we have queen to d3 check, king g1, and then do we have anything? We have rook e8, attacking the knight, and if the knight moves, we have rook e8. But he does have queen to g6, threatening all sorts of things. All sorts of things. So that's not amazing. We've got a load of time to think. I think this is a very critical position. 
e6 is a great move because it really weakens the g6 square because our f pawn is going to have to make a decision. Hmm. Now we could go queen to f6. And if e takes f7, queen takes f7 and offer a queen trade. And our queen also defends f5, which is really nice. And if, again, when the e-file opens, when the e-file opens, we've got a lot of threats. Also keeps an eye on e6, so the knight can't go to e6. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Queen f6 looks very nice. Also defends h6, which could be useful. Don't see what white is going to do. Let's play it. Queen f6. And my plan is to play rook a to e8. Our bishop constantly monitors this pawn, but crucially also defends the e1 square. So if we can swing this rook down like this by forcing the e-file open... I think we basically just win by force because we're going to be winning a ton of material or we're going to be promoting to a queen. So yeah, this looks very nice and I don't think white has enough firepower on the king side. Still can't believe that mouse slip from earlier, man. The, the game was so easy. All, all I had to do was take on c5. But, yeah, I, I, I don't understand queen h5. It just causes all kinds of problems. Okay, so... We could take with the rook. We could. But I don't see the point. Because the only reason to take with the rook would be if you want to double on the e-file. But we don't need to double on the e-file. Because... We've got two defenders on the e8 square. So I think taking with the queen makes sense to offer a queen trade and again force a move. It also gives us access to c4, which could be a useful check. The only downside is it takes the queen's eyes off of h6. But because the knight is like this diagonal sort of... Um, structure away from the h6 pawn. It's never going to get there. It takes, I think, four moves for the knight to reach a square, three squares diagonally away from it. Or like two, two squares diagonally away. I think it takes four moves. So, commoner piece of chess geometry. So I think queen takes. Of course, if he trades queens, it's completely over. This pawn just ties down the rook, and also, again, when we bring a rook to the e-file, I think it's basically over. So that's, that's all we need to do. Get a rook on the e-file, and don't get mated. <laughs> just just don't get mated. It's that simple, guys. It really is. <laughs> if only. But it's a very clean position. Not clean. Not clean, but like very winning <laughs> let's, let's say winning so yeah he he's got to make a decision because we are still two pawns up so if we trade queens like this is also a simple plan we are four moves away from just winning the game with c5 c4 c3 c2 obviously that takes four moves to actually implement but it exists so even if the queens get traded, and for whatever reason we can't use the e-file, we're good. Yeah, that was a move that I was expecting. Because it controls e8 and hits the bishop. But part of the reason I moved the queen to f7 is because it gives access to c4. So queen c4 threatens the knight and pins the knight to the king. Now, the problem is, if queen to c4... Our opponent 
can play queen to f3, defending the knight. Okay, so queen c4, queen f3. If queen e2, then we have rook e8, and it's over. But queen f3, if we go rook a to e8, then rook e1 is a threat because the knight is pinned, but king g1... We can't sack the queen for the knight, because after rook to e1, he has king to h2. He doesn't have to take us. So, after king g1, do we have anything? He's threatening to take the bishop now. If we go rook e1 immediately... If he takes, we're good, but if he goes king to h2, then I don't think we have anything. This is tough. Now, we could just trade queens and move the bishop, which I think is the easiest thing to do. So yeah, I don't think those lines worked out. If I miss something, then let me know. That you guys if if you guys saw a line that I missed, but I don't think I had enough. So I think this is just a simple way to do this. Save the bishop, keep the defense. And we're just going to get the rook rooks on the D and E files. And I don't see how white defends himself. Because if king e2, then rook e8. King has to leave the e-file. And the bishop is essentially tying down two of white's pieces. Which is obviously massive for us. Because it means we're kind of like a rook up. Kind of. So, yeah, kind of mad. Kind of mad. Um... I don't know what white's supposed to do. His rook looks active on h5, but it's, it's not really doing anything. That doesn't threaten anything. Can we just play rook e8? Maybe he wants rook e8, knight e2. But then we just move the bishop. It's a good defense, though. I don't see why we shouldn't go for this. Knight e2 blocks our access to e8, and it attacks the bishop. So we play a move like bishop to a5, and then I think we can actually maybe just push the c-pawn. Or play rook f6, rook e6, and threaten to take the knight, because white can't defend the knight a second time. Ah... Uh, well, I, that's not what I thought his idea was. <laughs> Do you guys see the move before I play it? Just rook e8. No, e1 even. Rook e1. And it's just mate. We can promote to a rook. It's checkmate. And yeah, white, white has no way out. See, what I was expecting here was knight to e2. Right, and my idea was to drop the bishop back to a5 to stop knight takes, and then white just doesn't really have moves. Maybe he goes like f3 to get his king to f2, and then like rook f6, king e2, rook e6, and you can't defend the knight. This rook is completely out with the game. You know, if it takes, then we just take, and same situation, really, except white survives a little bit longer. I don't think there was a way out for him, but I think knight e2 was more resilient. We'll, um, we'll do a bit more of an in-depth game analysis now. Okay, so, analysis time. We have d4, knight f6, bishop f4, and I go for d5. 
which kind of just walks into the London system, but I don't mind playing against the London. Obviously, White could have played a bunch of different moves on move 2. Could have gone c4, he could have gone knight f3, he could have gone g3, but he chooses the London. We oblige and go c6. c6 I like just because it controls the b5 square, which can often be a target for the knight to access the dark squares, like I was explaining in the game. So knight f3, bishop f5, c4, e6. e6 is an important move in my opinion. Because if you play something like knight bd7, white can potentially take like this. Now here, I assume knight takes, yeah, is better for black. But if you take with the pawn, the queen side is kind of, like, exposed. And the computer agrees that it's not the best of moves. So e6 is important. So if takes, you can take back with the e-pawn. Here, obviously, again, knight takes is better. But after a knight gets to c3, I mean. So knight c3, bishop e7 c5 and that was an inaccuracy and the computer wants castle yep and here it wants white to go h3 i assume to take the sting out of knight to h5 with bishop h2 or this in this particular case because g4 is a fork but Say I drop the bishop back to g6 first, then the bishop can retreat to the h2 square. And so knight h5 is a good move. Computer wants bishop takes b8, but he drops back instead. Knight d7, knight e5 is a mistake, yeah, because of knight takes g3. And you can't take my knight first, because if you can get this position, you're good. I'm still better, but white's okay. But the problem is, if knight takes, I can take the rook. And if knight takes f8, then I can take it. And how are you actually going to win this knight back? Like, it's trapped, sure, but you're going to have to spend a bunch of time trying to win it. And in the meantime, I'm going to cut away at your pawn structure. And you have no dark squared bishop to help you out in the defense of that. So if I move like bishop g2, I can just take... So say you play like a3, what do I have here? Like, well, firstly I can sack the knight, but I can do that at any time. So here it wants queen f6, and I assume to play for e5. So say bishop g2, take like this, take like this. Oh, and then there's just discovered checks on the king. So... That's why queen f6 is so good. So that after knight takes f2, there's a bunch of discoveries. So we have this position. b6. a5 is apparently better, but it's the same idea. b6. Bishop d3. And you could take the bishop. And go h6. So you can do this. And the bishop performs a really good role here of defending g5. So if white tries to push the pawn, you can take with the bishop, and the queen isn't tied down to the defense of that. So that's like what I was explaining towards the start of the video, where the bishop doesn't need to be accomplishing a whole lot. It just needs to be holding down important diagonals, and here it showcases that. So this was my idea. Well, sorry, that's an idea. My idea was to take on c5, and after this... I presumed I was just up a clean pawn, which I am, and this is just very good. If white castles, he admits he's got no attack. If white doesn't castle, then his king is very exposed. Computer wants moves like king f1, which makes sense, but, you know, king f1, rook e8, how are you defending this pawn? I'm just winning a second pawn, and I'm going to go g6. Maybe even h5 to cure the queen side, the king side structure. And even if I end up giving a pawn back, I mean, the position is very, very easy for me to play. 
maybe taking isn't best. Maybe bishop to f8 is better. So you can go c5. So this pawn's very well protected. Rook b8. That makes sense. But that was my idea. Uh, just to take here and go a clean pawn up. d4 is not it. <laughs> d4 is not it. I obviously didn't mean to play this. And because takes, takes. And e takes. And I'm just a pawn down. And even if I go a5. White. White actually has to be really accurate and find b5. Which is a crazy move. And if takes. D. Whoa. Okay. My opponent was not going to find b5. Second best is knight a4. Which is a mistake. I don't I don't see my opponent finding the move b5. We could have taken here. And I guess the, the d4 pawn is very weak. We get some activity with the queen. The knight. It argues a bit stranded. Here I can take on g2. Queen h5? h6? The computer is a madman. But I suppose... We're not losing somehow. Uh, but yeah, queen h5 is just a blunder. And h6 is the only move, because it's the only move that stops checkmate. Unless you go <laughs> f6 to give the king an escape there. But yeah, f6, he finds rook d1. Here, we just take, best move. And I was expecting b takes. And I think I was planning. I think I was planning queen a5. I believe that's what I said. Yeah, because the knight can't move and I'm going to take it. And if you take the pawn, then I take the knight. So I'm, I'm sure I said that during the game. Correct me if I didn't. But B takes. And e takes d4 is a mistake. You've got a, t you've got a castle. You've got a castle, apparently. He takes. I take. Here knight e2 makes sense, but then bishop takes b4, king f1, and yeah, d3 is correct. So I did consider d uh, c5, which is certainly one of the best moves. But I was just a bit worried we might get caught out on the king side. Queen takes f5, knight to f4, maybe knight to h5, e6. It looks a little bit scary, so I didn't really want to go into that. So d3. Knight, the knight doesn't have to move, but it does move. And then d2. And his position is just completely tied down. And here I expected queen takes f5, because it's kind of his best opportunity to take the f5 pawn. But it's... I can even play a move like queen e7, which isn't completely accurate, but it's very easy. And he doesn't have much going on. And as long as I can hold the king side down... This is a completely winning plan. Or winning this pawn and just getting a rook to the e-file. The computer wants rook h4. <sighs> yeah, sure. Sure. Whatever. I, I don't care. <laughs> e6 makes sense. It does. Queen a5. It suggests queen a5 or queen f6. Now, I did consider taking... And then here, and then queen d3. But it's apparently... Oh, queen e7. And you can't take the rook because of this, and it's mate. So, that's cool. And queen to d3 check is a move. But after the king moves, I wasn't sure. Ah, rook f6. Not rook e8, rook f6 monitoring the g6 square so queen g6 isn't the move and if knight f4 queen c2 king h2 defending the rook and then he wants to get the queen side pawns going this feels a bit like like like, like a bit more of a difficult way to do it to be honest i thought queen f6 was better because after takes Queen takes, and 
computer just wants to trade queens, as the white piece is. That's how bad the position is. Obviously, my opponent shouldn't allow that. Again, I thought about queen c4, but I wasn't sure after queen f3. Oh, I just have rook a to d8. <laughs> I was so fixated on getting a rook to e1 that I didn't even realize the knight's just undefendable. Had I seen that, I would have played that. I, I, I was just too fixated on the pawn. But it didn't matter in the end, because trading queens is nice and easy. Bishop c3, knight f4, rook a8, and knight g6 just gives the game away. And like I said, knight e2, I was just going to drop the bishop back. And white has nothing. Like, I don't know how you defend that knight. We'll see the top computer moves for white. Rook h4. And let's go rook e5. Rook d4. Rook e8. And it just wants to give up the exchange. And then the c-pawn's running anyway, so... I mean, if white went for this in the game, I'm happy. I mean, I could even put a rook on the d-file just so that he can't even give up an exchange to get rid of the pawn, but this is obviously completely winning, and our opponent makes it very easy on us by just giving us mate in two with uh, an under-promotion to a rook just to rub it in a bit. But that takes us to 1851 rapid rating, and if you didn't know, the goal is at least 2,000, once we get to 2000, we can see how it goes from there, but it's going to get a whole lot more difficult once we reach 2000. If you guys stuck around to the end of the video, then thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it, found it useful. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.